didn't borrow this from the customer. Hello, you, you all right? Sorry, guys, that is weird. To share their own girl. Daff about with it. <laughs> Remember, plumbing is your life because without plumbing, you die. Tell me about your heating system, Colin. <laughs> Hey, Colin. Yeah. We've got a plumbing problem here today. Colin, you run me up, didn't you, Cole? Yeah, yeah. Let's go and look at this job today. You coming with us? Look at you. Do you want to be a plumber when you get older? Look, I'll show you how to be a good plumber. Just hold that. <laughs> I'll take that. There you go. You're a plumber now. Well done. Right, let's go. Colin, let's go upstairs. Tell me about your heating system, Colin. <laughs> Right, we're up in the loft. Colin's favourite place is where he comes to hide. The loft, as we all know, is the cathedral of plumbing. So you've got an invented cylinder behind us here, mate. What is the problem? Um, well, a couple of weeks ago, uh, middle of the night, I heard like a drip and I just thought oh, I was um, dreaming. Megan woke up in the morning, went to the toilet and goes, oh, by the way, there's a puddle. There's a puddle in the bathroom. I thought, oh no. Come up and I found just kind of like a, a bit of a drip running down. Down there, yeah. We've had an issue with this. Right. That exact thing there before. Yeah, auto um, air vent. So just assumed that um, that is probably going to be the issue. Yeah, okay, cool. What we'll do, we'll scope out the system. If the expansion vessel's gone, we'll see if we can get an expansion vessel today and get that installed and get all the jobs sorted out, all right? Lovely, thank you. So let's have a look at this system. And before we have a look at this system, I do want to tell you about Learn Plumbing Online, your opportunity to learn plumbing as a trade from the very basics up to being able to make a frame at MBQ level. It's a course that I've put together myself and it is properly structured out, in my opinion, as a professional plumber, how someone just coming into the industry would want to learn. That's very basic, but it'd be perfect for someone, a, a new apprentice or an apprentice waiting to brush up their skills, a DIYer, or someone who's just bought a new home and thinks, hold on, I want to be able to fix plumbing problems myself. The cost of the course will be covered in the first job that you fix yourself without having to call a plumber, okay? I haven't priced it mentally. Click on the link below at the end of this video to check out Learn Plumbing Online with yours truly, Plumber Fats. Hopefully some of you who've watched some of the videos before will know that we have a thing here called an S-Plan system. Usually what I do when I go to a job is I look for the pump first because that is going to indicate to us which way everything's going. This is the heart of the heating system. We kind of ignore the boiler because in a system like this, the boiler is effectively just a heat source. But what we want to do is find out where the pump is because that will tell us where we're going from there and what's being distributed and how. So on the side of the pump, there's always a little arrow, probably on the back of this one, but I'll tell you now, it's going that way, all right? So we're pumping up here and then we've got heating one, of this two port valve. And then we've also got a flow that goes down to hot water off that two port valve. And because this is the highest point in the system when it comes to the, the heating system side, we've got an automatic air vent there. So when this is all filling up, that all comes up there like so, and we, we allow air out through this automatic air vent. We all know already how automatic air vents work because I've done loads and loads and loads and loads of videos on them, all right? A few other little bits you might want to be interested in. There's our immersion heater. This is an electric immersion heater, usually a backup should the heating system fail. Thermostat here, which is set incredibly low, actually. That controls whether we send a live supply to this valve, and when that valve's open, there's a separate live supply that will say, oh, I'm open now, and tell the boiler and the pump to come on. And the heating system for the radiators works in exactly the same way, apart from it doesn't have a thermostat like that, it has a wall thermostat. On the return, we've got a Fernox TF1 magnet on here, which is fairly standard. You get them all over the place. Magnet clean TF1s are pretty much the same thing. And then because this is a sealed system, we've got our filling loop here. So this is mains water supply, and we can open this up to top up the system whenever we've got a problem. And then it's difficult for you to see, but we've got the expansion vessel there. And remember guys, if we have a sealed system, we need somewhere to expand the expansion of cold water to hot water as we heat it up. And that'd be doing that with the rubber diaphragm in there, air on one side, water on the other. And at the bottom, we've got a little gauge there as well. Currently, we're showing zero pressure in there, but let's first pump up the pressure, pump up the pressure. Pump up the pressure! What I'm doing down here, I'm just putting my finger under the tundish. So on these systems, we have a high pressure relief valve. They always go into a tundish, and that's running down in this little white pipe here, off just outside to a waste pipe. You can have leaks out of that. We could be dumping system pressure out of the system because of a fault with the expansion vessel or with the high pressure relief valve. And that can be going into the tundish, and because it's tucked down there in the dark, can't see it and therefore Colin might not know that they've had a, a drop in pressure and there's been an issue already. Um, we know already that we've got an issue with this. 
I mean, you said it was leaking earlier and you can just see the state of it. So what we will do, whatever happens is we'll replace this. We'll pop a new one of these in today. I mean, look, you can just see all this is just indicative of there being a problem. Sorry guys, that is weird. <laughs> <laughs> that should be on an iron fitting. It looks like it's been soldered in. So the next thing I'll do, we're gonna to check to see if the expansion vessel has been compromised. So remember what we said, we've got water and air. The separation between the two of those is, yes, you've guessed it, lovely, durable, slippery, wet rubber. What we do, get up here, remove this lovely thing that reminds me a little bit of, who's the lady who sung? It takes time not to be gone. It takes more. Who dug that tune? After all, you should endure it. Do you believe? Colin? Share it. Ah, share. Don't worry, mate. <sighs> Do you hear that? Just finally offered a cup of tea, didn't you? Huh? I've actually got a flask of coffee in the van. But that was, how long was that? That was 22 minutes, something like that? Something like that, mate, yeah, pretty close. Hmm, 22 minutes, that's a pound for every minute. Right, so look, we've got a Schrader valve in the top here. There is absolutely no air in that whatsoever. So that's gonna need pumping up to pressure. We'll do that at the end of this job. So what we'll do is we'll take this out, replace that, we'll pump up the expansion vessel. We'll also pop a little bit of inhibitor in the heating system as well, and go from there. Thanks, James. I'd like to say thank you to everyone for coming to my first lesson today. It's so nice to see so many beautiful young women here. So I suppose you're here because you, because you want to learn a little bit about the intricate workings of an expansion vessel and how it weaves itself into the beautiful tapestry of life that is a pressurised heating system. Firstly, I'd like for you all to imagine that you're on a dance floor all squashed together, nice and hot and sweaty. You are the atoms, the small particles that make up a body of water, moist and in cohesion. But as you warm up that body of water, or in the case of the dance floor, you start to want to dance a bit, obviously you need a little bit more space around yourself to be able to throw up shapes. And it's the same for the molecules of water that are inside the heating system. As we heat up the cold water from the boiler, the rest of the system starts to get nice and hot and those atoms and molecules start to move and wobble and shake a bit and we need somewhere for that to go. Now normally on an open vented system we'd have a vent pipe that goes into the top of a tank like so and releases the small increase in pressure caused by everyone dancing more and more on that lovely sweaty dance floor. The heating system is the dance floor. That goes up and over into a crook and then down in there. But obviously we don't have that on a pressurised system, do we? So we need to install an expansion vessel. Rubber. There. A very large flat piece of wet, moist, black rubber. And it goes in here in the expansion vessel. On this side we have water. That is you guys who want to dance. And on the other side, we have the empty parquet space of the dance floor, otherwise known as air. It's very difficult for us to compress water, but it's not so difficult for us to compress air. So we can set the air pressure in here up one bar, or as I like to call it, one sheep bar. The water pressure in a heating system, as you probably see in a minute, I imagine James will charge up to one bar as well. We turn the heating system on and we start to increase pressure because everybody on the dance floor is starting to move about. Maybe you've caught the eye of some lovely young lady across the way. As the water heats up and you move your way over to that lady or everyone starts dancing more on parquet dance floor, this starts to everything move more and more the pressure goes up in here, the lovely bit of rubber starts to push up into our air pressure of one bar and takes the expansion of water from being cold to hot. And that is the integral job that an expansion vessel does. Thank you. So first thing I've got to go and grab an air vent. Here comes the rain again. Ah, got me Milwaukee pack out. Here we go, listen to this. They are the floats that go up and down inside an automatic air vent. We all know how they work already, but there's a little float in there. When it's full of water, the float goes up to the top and stops anything coming out. 
when there's air in here, i.e., you know, there's no water in it, it drops down and allows air out of the top until water comes up, boom, and it shuts off. Now, guys, I know you're going to say, Jim, you should go and get yourself one of those pumps that runs off Milwaukee batteries. I think Makita might make one as well, but um, I haven't got one and I haven't bothered to get one, but I'm, I probably will go on Amazon today and get one. Up the stairs we go. Feel like the uh, almost the end scene in Das Boat. If you haven't seen Das Boat, it's four hours long. Um, they all get killed at the end, all right, by uh, mosquitoes. Right, so we're back. First thing we need to do is just drop the pressure because we're at the top of the house. There's no heating system above us or anything like that. So we should be able to just drop the pressure off using our uh, high pressure relief valve, which is a bit naughty. Really, you should go out, get a um, hose pipe, take it outside and all that. You plumbers out there, you know what I'm doing. You might go, oh, you shouldn't do that <laughs> in the old keyboard, but you know you do as well. You just want to tell people how good you are on the internet, which at the end of the day is utterly meaningless. We're going to drop the pressure off down. I'm just going to do it down here with this little thing. Gives that a little twist. We should see some water coming out of there. A little pearl of wisdom for you as well, kids. If you're an adult and you're watching Plumber Parts at the moment, right, and you've got a young one who's sort of 14, 15, 16, and they're not listening to you anymore because they know best, don't they? Hey, like Mark Twain said, when I was 16, I thought my mum and dad knew nothing. When I was 21, I couldn't believe how much they'd learned in the last five years. But tell your kids this, if they're thinking of going to university, most of the jobs they're gonna be able to do when they're older, because of that university degree, will probably be quite easily done by AI. Things like barristers as well, lawyers, insurance brokers, things like that. AI is gonna be doing that job. But can AI come up here with a set of grips and undo this AAV? No, it can't. We need apprentices in this trade more than ever at the moment so please can you consider becoming a plumber a plasterer a chippy you will be so much happier in life have loads of mates you'll be working out on site all the time the first few years are going to be hard because you're not going to get paid much money but believe me it's worth it there we go there's the old one out let's have a look 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 at that inhibit we need to have inhibit on here I am going to start fitting stop cores as well to be fair if you put a stop core on a heating system you don't actually need to put inhibitor in. Well, I'll be talking about that in a future video. <laughs> girls and boys, boys and girls. We're now just gonna pump some air into that side of the expansion vessel because it has lost its air. That can be for a few different reasons. It's usually the uh, Schrader is um, basically just letting by. Way around that is I usually just pop a little bit of thread seal on the thread here and then pop this back on and that stops that from coming out. So we're just gonna pop this on here. I didn't borrow this from the customer. Honestly, I did borrow this from the customer. I'm only telling you that because I hate cyclists. I don't like Lycra. I don't like the way they ride next to each other on the road, knowing you're behind them. I don't like that new law, giving them, what's it, five meters space. Anyway, I'm just gonna put some air into this now. Colin, how do you use your bike pump, mate? It's not working, Cole. What is it every time we can film Max, stuff like this happens? For some strange reason, I can't get any air into that expansion vessel and really I want to put a bigger one on anyway. So we're going to go to our some local suppliers and hope that we can get a nice 18 litre expansion vessel just to whack on there. We've done that already, but also when that's off, we can pop a bit of inhibitor in as well. Let's go. Here we are in the suppliers, the place where you get all the things you need for your plumbing jobs. All we've got to do is while we're in here is not buy anything else. How much are these? 20 quid. Quanto cuesta por cada? No? Yeah, you just keep filming, Max. Come on. Ah! It's locked. Let's go back to the job. Expansion vessel. We gotta be quiet because the kids are asleep upstairs. Oh mate, the whole thing's just come down then. I've now got to try and twist this off. Falling down there. Ah! I can't get to it. Ah. Why do we do this for a living? It's completely full of water, which means that we've done the right thing, changing that out. Oh look, another day we were filming. I'll get wet. Again. We're in the smallest space and look where I have to stand. <laughs> Health and safety boy. Let me go, I'll put that there for you. That'll make it a bit better for you, won't it? Huh? Safer now, isn't it? I'll take this back to the shed. Later on, we'll cut this apart and we'll have a look and see what was wrong with it. Uh, but it's completely full of water. 
the thing is, right, this is probably a bit too small for this system. So the fact we're putting an 18 litre one on now is obviously a huge improvement. Wow, I'll tell you what guys, that was heavy. That's probably a nice little 15 kilo biceps. Hold on, what am I thinking? Got to do it for the Plum Pots fans. <sighs> right, just popping a bit of Loctite on here. How am I going to get around there then, mate? You can't, so we're going to have to just... No, no. There's no such thing as calm. Who do you think I am? Sadiq Khan. Basically, we're putting some pressure in here now via the filling loop. Can we just say as well, please, guys, just so you know, two days ago was the due date of my baby being born. He hasn't been born yet, and I'm out here doing this. Anyway, right, so that's done. Cole, can you turn the heating on, please, mate? Gracias. We're holding pressure. Um, new expansion vessel's in. New automatic air vent is in. All I've got to do is pop some inhibitor in the system, which you guys know how to do. I've done it on this channel loads of times. I mean, would it be a good idea that we try and just clear out the TF1, see if there's anything in it while we're here? Ooh, look at that. Cheer. So this is magnetite that's been caught on the magnet of this TF1 filter here. <laughs> Sorry. Do you want to see it? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get him go, oh, we're adults, yeah? For every plumber that takes one of these out, they're always like, oh, hello, you. All right, so you just take that off. Tell you what, Cole, this system could do with a bit of a clean, mate. There's quite a bit in there, isn't there? But good to see it's doing its job. Uh, she's crying now, because she knows. She's like, oh, he's, he's touched something he didn't need to touch, and now he's caused a leak. Doing things like this, it's exactly the same as that toilet job a couple of weeks ago and we drilled through, well, I'll give you a link to it at the end, but when we drilled through that pipe, loads of people said, why did you screw the toilet down? I'd have just glued it down. And they are exactly the same people who, if I hadn't have screwed it down, would have said in the comments section, why didn't you screw that toilet down? And this is exactly the same thing. Why did you touch that TF1? I wouldn't have done it. And then I'd have got, oh, why didn't you clean out that TF1? I'd have done it. Right, we're going to the other job now, everyone. All right. I didn't leak at all just then. I didn't have to faff about with it for 10 minutes to try and just get it to do what it should naturally do, which is not leak. Right then, gang, got the beast back here now. It's still, as you can, oh, it's still got water in it. <laughs> so I'm just going to get the rest of the water out. We'll cut it in half and then you can see, hopefully we'll see some sort of split in the diaphragm. Sometimes they can just start to sort of, I don't know, it's weird. They just go a bit sort of mould almost. It's really strange. I will just uh, let some of the water out. We'll cut it open and see what's inside. Got a clamp down. Boy, let's get old in the top, eh? Lovely. Right, here we go. Right, so what seems to have happened, water has definitely got inside this piece here. On the plus side, we've got the uh, smallest fire pit ever made just here. Probably sell that in B&Q for about 150 quid. Let's just go over this very quickly. The outside area here has got compressed air in and there's water inside here that comes in and out because through here according to the expansion and contraction the heating up and the cooling down of the heating system and that is basically how these work this has definitely got a compromise in there somewhere sometimes with rubber expansion vessels like that it can just start to percolate through the rubber and it's quite difficult to see but we've got loads of water on the air side uh, it's definitely failed i mean the amount of water that it had in there was mental so i'm happy we've taken that out especially when you know a, a little one like that is probably not big enough like, that's one thing i always say guys they're never big enough for the systems that people fit on most heating systems are 10 radiators is need at least an 18 litre expansion vessel on it so if you've got a little red one like that a little 10 or 12 one just whip it out and change it over it's a good idea right then guys i'm gonna go down the loft and i'll see you at the next job here we are this is the hardest drive to get in ever you can only back in but weave our way down there actually that wasn't as hard as i thought it'd be but there we go, let's have a look at this job. Hello, Cassie. Hello. Woof, woof, woof. Right, in there, go. Boiler, Boiler in there. Yeah, two port valves. Boiler down there, okay. Controller, two two port valves. So we've got S-Plan system, hot water and heating. Oh, mate, what a spot. So we need to just drop the pressure out of the system quickly so we can then take that old vessel out. So the symptom of the problem is, Jim run me up a couple of days ago and said, 
I've got a problem. They've got no pressure on the system. Uh, I suspect straight away that the expansion vessel was gone up there, especially since they've got 13 plus radiators here and a 10, a 12 litre expansion vessel. The expansion vessel in the back of the Valent uh, has already gone like years ago. And the one that was put on upstairs was put on when that one went wrong. But the problem is, is that the expansion vessel in these boilers, I usually see as just accounting for the expansion of the water in the boiler. We need to account for the expansion of all those radiators as well. That's 100 plus litres of water pretty much going about, even more. So we're going to put on an 18 litre expansion vessel up there as well. But then that should make the whole system work happily. And then as usual, inhibit and leave. So that's what we're going to do in this job. And then after that, we've got a nice little shower job to do. It's a, it's a video of many things today. Now it's showing F22 fault which is the traditional Valent Fault F22, and actually a few other boiler makes of low pressure. Every time you buy an expansion vessel, if you're replacing one, always make sure that it comes with a wall clip. So we've got one here. This is gonna be so much fun. You want it, do you, son, hey? <laughs> Bit of leg spin, oh, googly. Right, so we've dropped the pressure in the system. We're at the top of the system here. Hopefully, this will just suck. Oh, look at that, nothing. Not a blob, but I've got to say that it's pretty light, so I don't think the expansion vessel's gone. But I'm going to put a bigger one on anyway because it's a good idea. This is too small for the system. Pressure's got too big. It started to dump pressure out of the valve down by the boiler, like I was doing a minute ago. And then when everything's cooled down again, it's gone back down to zero. And then the boiler said there's an F22 fault. That's the problem, okay? So I've just got to basically alter this pipe work here. What I'll do is we'll cut back this length of pipe there, drop this down, and then that'll marry up nicely onto there. I don't know water comes out now, Max. I mean, it's all a bit higgledy piggledy in there, isn't it? Okay, what is it like? You like a glove on a foot, isn't that what you say? <laughs> we got to do is put a straight coupling on there, boy. But you know what that means, don't you? Down to the van. Come on guys, in the comments, defend cricket. Max seems to think cricket isn't as manly as playing football. Now, I know football, you have 22 blokes falling over going, oh, I hurt me leg. Oh, someone touched me. Oh, but they didn't actually, when we looked in the replay, he just fell over, mate. When they started calling them the lionesses, I thought they meant all of football, not just birds football. You stand at the other end, Max, when you've got someone bowling gas at you, like 80 odd mile an hour, even at village level, 70 is like, whoa, this is quick. I knew you got killed, this Aussie bloke. He said, I'm gonna bump you. They had all the slips in. This guy was getting paid to come over from Australia to bump people like me who are three and a half feet tall. Dropped one short. I was like, oh, scon me, hit my helmet, bounced once over my head for four. That is no lie, honestly. And that's, that's a man sport. Got out next over. Just bought an off spinner on nice and slow. Just scooped up to mid off. Got caught. I was like, thank you very much. I can go to work on Monday without a broken face. Anyway, we're going to do some soldering upstairs now. <laughs> so I've got a 15 mil coupling here. No, no. 15 mil coupling here. <laughs> it could be like Don Mazzetti. Anyone watch uh, Bro Science Life? Remember, plumbing is your life because without plumbing, you die. Remember everyone, buy all my tools and also get access to Learn Plumbing Online in the links below. Right, cleaning the pipes up there. Just do this with everything if you can, especially if you're doing a little bit of the old soldery woldery. You guys know what's coming up next. The fluctuator's coming out. It's a beautiful bit of soldering this. Just need a little bit of rag. Just leave that in there for the next plumber. Now we're just putting some pressure back into the system. Automatic air vent, don't worry Max. Right, just gonna pump the system up to one bar. Right, that's it. Everything's reinstated on this system, that's job done. Why is it they make things so hard to put back together? Right, off to the last job of the day. You know, camera? James here to have a look at your shower. Oh, technology. Hello, my dear, how are you? So, we've just been into the job there. Shirley's a little bit camera shy, she's lovely, but she's having trouble turning on and off her shower. And admittedly, well, there's a couple of weird things about it. The shower is stiff and difficult to turn on and off, but also it's got a one and a two on it. So it looks like they've fitted a two outlet shower, but just blocked off one of the outlets which is a bit naughty, they shouldn't really do that, but maybe they had a bit of a deal on getting loads of them when they fitted all these in these houses. I want to take apart the um, shower valve and just have a look and see if we can get either a new one or if I can get some lubricant on it, or um, if we can measure the spindle 
and uh, from that then we'll see if we can get a new like larger sort of handle for it lovely spot though isn't it beautiful <laughs> Shirley's never come back from the pub without waking everyone up with that thing going off right uh, here we go we've turned the water off already and we're just gonna basically I'm just gonna turn this so it's exactly that way okay firstly so we've got a known place so it's pointing at two and then we're gonna undo this with a little grub screw in here Try and leave the grub screw in if you can, otherwise it'll end up going down the plug hole. I don't know why, but they're different. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me, but there you go. A few other people have been here before already by the looks of it. Right, that then undoes. So, Shirley's been told by a plumber that she'd have to take the whole tiles off, all the walls off, to be able to fix this problem. Which doesn't seem really correct to me, but we will see. I've obviously uh, got soft in my old age. That's never been more convenient, to be fair. Right, so there's that out. Look, it's full of stuff. Like you can, I can feel it on my hands. There's munge. Good, good news though. So we know we can just get a new one of those. It's a shame because that, you know, that moving part there should be serviceable. Right, Max, we're going to fix this today. Take that off. That should come off. That's the stiff bit. It's not stiff now. Already, it's gone nice and loose. This is where the resistance is coming from. It's just all in that. But other than that, the valve's fine. I think we'll be all right, my darling. So look, feel that now. That that turns lovely now. Valves like this are really common in loads of different showers. So what we do, we have a ceramic disc like this. This moves around, right, and allows water in and out of these holes here, okay? And what can sometimes happen is that they actually get scored with a little bit of lime scale or, or something like that, and then they start to leak. And that's generally actually how these fail. They, they fail like that, but it's just a bit of mindless knowledge. Right, so we've got some lubricant on that central shaft in there. I've just popped it in. I'm just popping this back together. We've got a new O-ring on here because the other one is really floppy and horrible. So we're just popping this special stopper in, which put that in the middle. Right, water's back on, guys. That is so much sim. Look at that. Do you want to come in here, get your kit off and get in the shower? I'll take your socks off. Ha! I just want to see you be able to work this, all right, before we go. We'll just move all my tools out of the way quickly. I just want to see you work this while I hold this over here. I've got to say, I wish every shower had one of them. Do you? Yeah, I sat on that while working on your shower. Right, Max, promise me you don't tell Emily I've been in the shower with another woman. With, an old, with an old woman. No, don't you worry. Go on, right, so I want to see you turn that on because you that was what you were struggling to yeah. turn on earlier, wasn't it? Ah, nice and easy. Turn it off and then turn it on again. All good, that's better than it was earlier, yeah? That's brilliant, thank you. Brilliant, okay, cool. That's all I wanted to know because that is the bit that means this is done properly. So, Shirley, before you say anything about it, no, there's no charge, okay? No, um, no, I'm to give honestly. No. 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 I insist. no. In the words of Ben Kingsley, no. Yeah. Well, you gave us a Coke Zero. Yeah, so, I care. okay. Well, should I, should I buy the baby? Um, Maybe you want to buy the baby. Eight, eight pints of ale. <laughs> and I'll see you again <laughs> randomly in Waitrose. It was meant to be. Nice to meet you. See you soon. Bye bye. It annoys me because, like, you want to, you genuinely don't want to take any money, but they genuinely want to pay. So you're sort of stuck, aren't you? You just, after a while, it's like, just give us whatever you want. You don't say any money then, and then they're happy because they've paid, and you're happy because you just screwed them over out of 450 quid. No, I'm joking. <laughs> right, another job done, guys. There we go. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Remember, if you want to learn plumbing yourself in your own time from absolutely no knowledge whatsoever up to doing an MVQ level 2 frame then visit our lovely plumbing school learnplumbingonline.com links below the next video is going to be this one just here I think this one is yes yet again me drilling a hole through a floor into a pipe and causing a massive flood around my mate's house sorry Corin. hope you enjoyed the video guys remember to subscribe and also remember to hold tight Blah!